Mark My Words Productions. We have one of the most controversial and consciously aware spoken word artists ever in the house, Mark Marcel, and I uh, want to talk about, you know, your experiences with CMT. Wow. Um, it's almost, you know, I, I guess I searched for it in a way without even knowing what I was searching for. Well, one, which should leads you to anything like this, more than likely you would be someone who questions. You know, someone who thinks more out the box or just who wonders what's going on, you know, with life in, in general. But to fully explain exactly what it is, DMT is short for dimethyltryptamine. It is found in almost every living organism. Now, more importantly, it's found in your brain, the, the pineal gland, the part of your brain. And what does that do when you, it triggers your third eye and your third eye opens up the world of answers. It is where you come from. It is thoughts. It is consciousness. It's a thing Buddha was tapping into. And and shamans and and you know, a lot of great thinkers that uh probably Nostradamus, now that I think about it. It makes sense. But we use the word hallucinogen, but it's it's not a hallucinogen, you know, it is like a meditative form. What I've learned is that um out of body experience, astral projection, when I channeled myself, uh, meditation in this DMT realm, all those are like branches to a tree. And that tree is like the world of answers. And this thing has so many different feelings to it that doesn't make sense when you think about it here, but when you cross, you understand the, the magnificence of it. But um, one you're a part of it, right? But that that world, it is almost like you are from the Matrix, you get plugged in, you know, you get plugged into something. Except the Matrix makes it seem like you got to plug in to something that isn't real. This is the opposite. You're plugging into something that is real. This is what really isn't real. The physical has been created through, you know, imagination and, and, and thought, and thought that came from the world of answers, that realm. So it's kind of the opposite of the Matrix, you know, while, that, while you know, he could do all these kind of things in the Matrix, that, but he was plugging into a reality that wasn't real. This is different, you know, you plug into the real thing. It's wild because, like, you know, I've, I've experienced with this probably over, like, probably close to 50 times now. But, um, and they all are different, but, they, and they all are a build up. But, uh, the first experience I had was more like an introduction. You remember like a dream that fades away, so it's best for you to have people around so that you can talk to about your experience. But my first experience, I did it totally by myself. And it was more or less to show me that, like, hello, we're here, we're watching you, and it's so good to see you. And it was energy. Um, more so, it was, it, it was, it was in the form of a, uh, it were beings and they were waving, and um, if you, when you can't really look straight at them, you know, it's almost like you, like you can look around, you know what I'm saying? You can see around with, the, you know, the the form, you know, the outline of it. So, but with beings and they they were showing me so many like things and devices that I couldn't possibly comprehend at the time and even only a little bit now with, you know, more times that I've gone under, I start to understand what's going on uh, with that and this reality. But at the time, it was kind of like, uh, it was it was very calm. It wasn't intense at all, I wouldn't say. It was more or less to show me that, yeah, um, you know, you're awake and we know you're awake and we're watching you and things are cool and you and everything is fine you know but that was the first trip you know you you dive deeper down the rabbit hole you know things will get extremely intense that uh, put you in check but it is intense dude it will show you everything sometimes it'll show you the most magnificent things and beautiful 
things you can never even think of. And then, like, just in the next second, it'll show you the most intense, overwhelming, just like, oh, my God, like, what is going on? But it means something. It's not to scare you. It's to teach you. But some people fear what they don't understand, which is totally understandable here because, I mean, I'm not Superman, dude. I mean, I've had some trips where uh, it totally put me in check. I was like, whoa, okay, I don't want to do this for a few months. But I don't call it a bad trip, though, because I just call it an intense trip. Because truly, it still shows you something. The first 20 times, I did it by myself. I didn't really start getting the answers and really understanding what was going on until I started sharing my experience with people. And when I really started doing it with people, it was such a more profound. And sometimes I found that um, the room would explain my trip to me. Just in talking about it, man, it makes you remember. So it's always better to do it with other energy in the room, people, you know, on frequencies and, and friends. It's better understood when you have that high volume of energy in the room and it's not um to clear something up you know some people think that they're talking to aliens you know when they cross and stuff like that well i I can see why people would, would think that if they've done it only a few times but the more you do it the more you realize that you're not talking to aliens you're talking to you may be talking to souls that have occupied alien bodies before but you are crossing into a stage of the afterlife. It is the world of the answers. You are experienced with, with a higher realm of consciousness. And I can understand how people get confused with aliens, you know, but, but it's, it's not aliens per se, like, you know, like, like people have thought. Now, you don't fully cross until, until you die. The ego is what keeps you here. Now, you need some of your ego because your ego is what tells you you are alive. Your ego is selfish. Your ego is selfish enough to tell you that you're alive in this imaginary fake world. So you have to check it. Otherwise, if you don't check it, it can grow to being selfish enough to be like, you know what? I'm going to scam this person out of money. You know what? I'm, I'm selfish enough to talk to this person just because he has status or whatever. You have to check that. So you need some of your ego to tell you that you are alive. Because if you have none of it, you're, you're into the world of answers. You're, you're in the afterlife. Because the ego, the selfishness, does not exist in the world of answers. So for you to exist here, you need somewhat of a, of a little bit of an ego to tell you you're alive. But you need to check it. You need to bring it down. You need to tone it. Now, there is no such thing as death. The death in a sense, it means in. You know what I'm saying? When you look at it, it means in. There is no in. There is a continuation, and actually you're going back to the beginning, you know? That world, whatever, the world of answers made this world. This this is what is fake. This is what is created. This is for us to play in. This is just a game to us, basically. It's like we put ourselves into a mystery, to have fun, to experience. Basically, um, one of my experiences, I went to a source of God, I would say, and it showed me what it kind of looked like, but it also takes different forms. But it was giving off this energy, and the energy, and it was telling me that basically what God is, is us. God, being that knows everything, broke itself down to experience new things, because knowing everything and having nothing new to experience is boring. So you break yourself down into souls, and we make this reality and we forget and we experience and we have fun and we play and we experience. But we are God and we need to let that light shine through us here so we can give ourselves the best possible experience that we can. You know, I've started asking people this lately. It's like, hey, do you ever feel like you're in your own movie? <laughs> you know, and everybody else is like just a character aiding you along the way, but this is your own movie. But they're not telling you, you know. It's like, and it's funny because in one of my trips, I came out of it, and in the session, um, and I know this was the energy that was brought into the room, still echo being echoed from my trip, like being placed around them, and they were looking at me, smiling like, "Oh, you're so close, you're so close," like, like you almost know it, you almost know it, and it's like they just don't want to tell me. It's for me to figure out. So, one thing. 
from one of my experiences I crossed and I asked it, I was like, I want to know everything. I want to know the answers. They said, the answers? I said, yes, I want to know the answers. And they said, Mark, why are you asking questions for answers you already know? And I was like, huh? And they said, you already know everything. And I was like, I do, don't I? And it's like, yes, you do. And you do. You know everything, man. You really do. You know, I'm really not smart. Like, I've just made myself aware of certain things. I'm no smarter than anybody else. We all know everything. We all know the same shit. It's just some of us choose to come here and forget and go through their progress the way they want to. So you're not really smarter than them. You know what I'm saying? If you know the same shit, I'm just making myself aware of certain things. And making yourself aware of that information is is a valuable um, asset to me personally because I felt awake. I've, I've, I've seen where that this place is. Man, it's just a damn video game. You know, it's it's a figment <laughs> of your imagination and you can manipulate it in thought and, and everything in my life feels like it has gone down the way I have consciously subconsciously wanted it in a way you know what I'm saying it's like deep 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 down I wanted to go through all this so I can have the experiences that come with it and that's what being awake is you know what I'm saying being awake yeah. is realizing that this place is beautiful and you've given yourself certain situations and problems to go through so you can experience it because every problem has its own own message in it, you know what I'm saying, and one is really not greater than the other, it's just different, you know, and and we come here to experience different things and different problems, and our problems are fucking off. <laughs> Your problems are nothing, they're nothing, why do you give such little things such a large amount of energy? In fact, truthfully, you know, to really touch on your problems... One, we are not really human beings. You know, people get, like, so wrapped up in these human bodies, but we're not human beings. We're energy. That's all we are. We're energy okay. that occupies these bodies. You know, people are like, I'm not Mark Marcel. I'm just an energy occupying the body that people know is Mark. That's all I am. And so we're okay. enlightened energy. So when we come here, right, now, what's fun for human beings? What's fun for human beings is fast cars, is jewelry, clothes, is just stuff like that, you know, material things. It doesn't really mean anything. But what is fun for enlightened beings, which we all are, what's fun for us is to give ourselves these problems that we can work through. Because, one, we're not checker players. We're chess players. You know what I'm saying? We're intelligent beings of energy that... Somehow, giving ourselves these problems are, are what we want because it's a game to us and it's fun. And without the problems, you wouldn't know what not having a problem is. So you got to have all these things to make you understand the other. It's funny because the world is creation. It really is a yin and yang. you got to have the I other to understand the other. you got to have both sides of it. And, and truthfully, to touch on... There really is no good or bad. It is how you look at it. That's all it is. Now, one thing that you have to remember when people will be like, oh, well, then you can do anything you want. Well, I mean, you really can. But what you have to understand is that karma, <laughs> karma is so relevant. It is so relevant. And the reason that it's relevant is because we are all one. Here we don't feel like we're one because you see the separatism and stuff like that. But when you really break this yeah. down, all we are are fingers to a hand. And it's connected. Those fingers are connected to that hand. So mm -hmm. the reason why karma is relevant is because we're all one. Now, when you do something, the energy that you put out, being that we are all one, will come back to you in some form of way. If we were two or three or four, it wouldn't, you know, because there's other things that it could go to. But the energy will come back to you. So, yeah, there really is no right or wrong. But if you want to live a peaceful, wonderful, happy, gratifying, just thrilling life, that is the energy you need to put out.
because that is the energy that will come back to you. Love. People have, have been trying to define the meaning of love for years. It's just, you know, it's like, you just can't define love. Love is just so, you know, that's what they say, you know, and, and I understand that. It is hard to define love. But love is acceptance. That's all it is. That's why God Absolutely. is all love. God is all love because God is all accepting. And when if you accept something for no matter what it is, whether it has different uh, morals in you or or a different race or if it goes about their life differently, if you accept them, if you that is a sign of love. That is love. Love is acceptance. That is all it is. Absolutely. And and good, there is no good or bad. There is no good or bad. It's only acceptance, which is acceptance, which means there is only love. Man, I went through my own issues with racism and homophobia until I realized that God is all love. And if God is all love, everything, every creature here, no matter how ugly it has been or wrong people may say it is, goes to heaven. And when you believe that, who are you to condemn anybody? God doesn't care about all the things that religion tries to make it out to be. And God wants you to experience the love that you can. And he wants you to get it right. And getting it right is just trying to do the best that you can and share and love. And and there is no judgment. You judge yourself. Like when you die, you almost have like a, a panoramic life review. Uh, you see your life before you. And you feel it in each, each scene that you have in your life. And... and, and and you go through it, you remember how you felt, but you also live it, and you're in that other person's shoes, and you remember how they felt. There's no God judging you. You're judging yourself, and you're your harshest critic. But, man, when you cross, it's another consciousness. It's like it's another feeling. You see it. You're like, oh, man, I got to get this right. You know? And um, I will say this. The most important thing there is, the most important, most creative, the most valuable tool that you can use and have and give is love and to share and when you have that vibration coming through you um man you know every you realize that uh everything will be all right and it's a beautiful feeling to have we're approaching a higher consciousness now i can see it with the world and it's so good that people are opening up and it is time it's it's so good to be alive too. Also in this, in this point of time in history, this is the greatest moment I believe in the history that we know of that we've been here. I mean, first black president, um, as atrocious as it was, the, the towers falling. I mean, we've lived through that. We saw it. The internet going to the moon. What? Are you kidding me? I mean, what's next? Oh, there's a lot that's next, and it's coming. It is coming. I mean, there's a lot of things. It's, it's going on. I see us progressing as humans. I see um, things that's going to happen with our culture. I see things that's going to happen with the financial system. So I, I would, as humans, we are going to evolve physically. I mean, that is going to happen. Actually, they're doing. When I say they, um, I mean the energies from the other side. They're doing work on our bodies now. They're like doing things to the DNA for our consciousness to be able to evolve into now every second is being done and there's things that we're going to evolve to physically we're going to be able to do things more things with our consciousness the way we see we're going to have a broader scope on the way we see we're going to be able to see from the right to the left instead of just seeing from the peripheral the peripheral will be like almost from in back of us and like our consciousness will raise to a level like we're talking will become uh, you know telepathic um so there's a lot of things happening with the earth. People forget that the earth is a living being. <laughs> you know, the earth is moody. You know, just like people are moody, the earth is moody. The earth has mood swings. The earth the earth goes through puberty. And for us to think that, oh, you know, we can't, we're not going to, nothing's going to happen here is our ignorance because the earth has gone through massive changes. Why can't it go through again? And it will. Um... But I think it's a beautiful thing to see, like, a lot of things like this um, happening. I mean, the changes, you know, the things that... Because it makes us open our eyes. 
it makes us like, oh, whoa, like what's this? It's like, and it gives you things to open up about. And financially, I mean, this shit is gonna fall. I mean, that's that's almost you can almost know that without seeing it. You know, I mean, that's just yeah. goes with history. Um, every dynasty crumbles, but it's going to crumble in a way where um, it's going to be for the better. So the money systems will crumble because, one, money is a primitive thought. Think about it. If you believe in aliens, you know, if you believe that they can come here and stuff in these amazing spaceships and stuff like that that they have, you got to, like, wonder, damn, they can come here. Wow, that's why they're dead that advanced, that they can do that, you know what I'm saying? Now... Can you imagine an alien going to a spaceship lot, buying a spaceship? Like, be like, here, let me put $20,000 on this spaceship, like, G2X. I can't, man, I can't. The knowledge is there. The technology is there. So, really, money is a primitive thought. So, if we are going to evolve as humans, which we have no choice but to, the money system will become obsolete. And it will, and people be like, oh, so what is it going to be a barter system? No, it's not going to be a barter system. It's going to be a system that you understand that everything is at your disposal, and you're going to be able to take. It's going to be able to there for you to have. But we're going to be so advanced consciously by the time this happens, that we're not going to like like take advantage of it, and we're going to understand that it's there for our disposal. And that's what technology is here for, man. We don't use technology right now how we should. And, we have no choice but to evolve to peace because that's what, like, the major or, like, the point of evolution is, peace and acceptance and love. That's what we're evolving to. Yeah. So we're going to evolve to that. So we're going to work through all that. That's a, We have no choice. That is coming. And I don't care if it's coming tomorrow or 10 years or 100 years or 5,000 years. It is going to happen. You can't stop it. You know what I'm saying? That's evolution. We will evolve. To not just knowing everything, but being able to live out everything here and in that peaceful harmony. But to even just take this even on a deeper note, I know we're running out of time, but I really want to end on this note. You know, people have this big assumption, you know, whether we were created from uh, apes and stuff like that or, or even if we came from aliens. But, you know, it's deeper than that. I tell people... We didn't come from the stars. We made the stars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we exactly. made this. Exactly. We made this for us to experience. So we need to experience it and enjoy it and love it, you know, because we made it for ourselves to experience. It's the greatest, this physical, it's the greatest gift that ever is, that ever was. So, uh, so that's important, you know. We, we just need to love each other. 